ki runga e tēnei urupa, te, te ingo o tēnei urupa ko Aupaurua. Nō reira, a moi mai, moi mai, moi mai. Tu mai mātou ki te kanohi ora, tu akana teina koutou katoa. Um, ki ora tātou katoa. Uh, we got another farm. they've got a, re a reunion up here at the Riffers. So uh, I've been mindful they'll be coming up here, so uh, we'll try and afford them the respects to give them their time to, to um, and their, as Krani, uh, Kaumatoa, their, their father, who taught me all the, the history here along with my mother. So let's orientate ourselves um, to begin with that. Along there is Rako Manga Manga, that peninsula, that's my work office, that's my office. When I was working for Doc, uh, I do all the pest control out there, or I manage the pest control. There's 1,500 hectares and it goes all the way out if you, you can't see the, uh, um, the, the Manga. Um, but that's um, uh, uh, Rako Manga Manga, the Whenua and Rako Manga Manga. And it's also known by the name of 3B2 Ahu Whenua Trust, which my mother's a major, uh, we are a major shareholder in that, in that, uh, in those lands there. There's 22 hapu from Napui that tātai into that, so we're only the kaitiaki of the 22 hapu that came out with Rewa, Moka and Farirahi to do the whawhai, the raupatu out here. So they, they sat down after the, after the big conquest and they sat around the table and each chief would stand up and say, oh, well, my hapu produced so many soldiers, I want so much land. So all the land was divvied up between here and Russell. We're now pushed back just to that 1,500 hectares plus our hapu kainga that we have all around Rafati here. So if you look across the uh, bay there, Ipipiti, the biggest island, it's Urupukapuka, straight across there. And that's where we go tomorrow uh, to Matarawa, that's where the three chiefs were buried. Fararahi, Lewa and Moka were buried on that <coughs> island there. And then our grandfather came and when we lost the land or alienated the land, um, he came out and dug up the three brothers and shifted them back to where they come from in Matarawa. <coughs> Because he didn't think it was right that they should stay, lie in a foreign land that no longer belongs to us. So that's um, Urupukapuka, pest free, as is six other islands. And we've done an airdrop on there. Oh, bad juju, according to the whanau here. Poison coming down the air. But what it done was we got rid of all the pests over there. It's a pest free, all these islands are pest free. And we translocate threatened birds. We not only translocate them, we go and, we go and catch them ourselves. The whanau here, there's a six of us, we call ourselves the Rafti Birdie Club. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and we go in, and we were taught by Isabel how to catch wildlife. And we're qualified to catch wildlife as well. Here and another fella called um, What's your name, darling? Um, another scientist. Over there. Ringing the bell. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so that's something that we're proud of, seven motori out there that are completely no pests whatsoever. If you have a look at this bay here called Hawaii, and the Hawaii block, which is the other big major land holdings that our whanau have is on this block over there. Hawaii. Um, and this bay is called Hawaii, which may, means many winds. Uh, this, this, is, um, this is the Urupa, like I, I, I said, it's, uh, the name of it is Aupaurua. It's the Ngāti Kota Urupa. <coughs> Remember we tātai into two hapus? This is the Ngāti Kota one. From here we go to the Patikea one at Te Rautaua. The name of this bay is called Aupaurua, not Oki. Let me tell you a story about Oki. In 1865, when the chiefs under Te Tiriti were given the powers to only sell land with, to the government, 
they started waking up after a while, oh, we're going to have no land. So they refused to sell land to the government because all the government was doing was on selling it for about 200% more to the settlers. So they established an organisation called the Native Land Court in 1865 which compelled Modi owners to survey their own lands. And of course we knew where our lands were because they was marked by popos. And if you want to go around here in Hawaii there, the whānau over here put in popos to mark the old ancestral boundaries. So we all knew where our lands were, but it was just another, I guess, uh, another way of the government of alienating us by our lands. And what they done was establish the Modi Land Court, which took the ownership from the hapu and the chiefs into individual ownership. So that changed everything. When all of a sudden only the chiefs had the authority to make decisions, but he only made those decisions on the whakaro or, or what the people thought. <coughs> At a stroke of a pen, all our hapu lost all our land. And it now came under the, the uh, native land court and was just another mechanism to actually alienate our lands. So, going back to uh, surveying the land, there was a man by the name of Oki. He was the surveyor. And he surveyed all the land in Rafati. And guess what? We had to give Oki land in payment because that was, the government wasn't going to pay for it. It was, you had to pay the, uh, the surveyor to do his job. So that's why he surveyed all the blocks in here in Rafati and put it on a cadastral map and it's all in titles. So how they named this place Oki Bay? Well, it's after they follow who was um, an architect and alienating our lands. Uh, that's about it from, uh, from me. There's, uh, it's a beautiful place, um, as you can see. Um, it's administered by uh, the trustees. Uh, I'm not too sure if we've got a trustee on the Suda Yeah, we have. Mayron. Mayron. I've taken it on until Moses steps in. Okay. And um, um, if you notice in the Suda um there's the, uh, the, the, the Kohatu, the, the headstones are all facing different directions. Whereas if you can, if you, you can tell when you go to the, the Whatukeha one, they're all facing the east. Okay, that's the rising of the sun. So our tupunas always face the rising of the sun. So that's east out there. These ones are facing east, north. Um, but it's a beautiful place. Uh, I like to relate the story of um, why our mum come up here. Um, although she was brought up in uh, Patukeha, uh, we asked her before she died where she wanted to rest because there was, um, they wanted to take her back to Matarawa to be with our dad. Um, we said no. Um, then they wanted to take her up to Tarotawa, which is the Patikeha one, and we said no because she wanted to be up here amongst her mother's people. So, um, and that's been challenging at times. Um, uh, I put it down to, um, um, I guess, um, the standing of our mother here. Um, uh, there was a lot of jealousy uh, in regards to our mother because she was, uh, she was quite a strong lady. Uh, she wasn't afraid to stand up in, uh, in the marae uh, during, um, during, um, during huis or during the porphyries, where women are not allowed to talk um, and she'll voice her opinion. Um, she was very vocal on, um, on, the, um, on the lands here in, in Hawaii. Um, I must uh, acknowledge uh, my mum and Peter and Liz and Junior who were the trustees um, to return all those lands from Hawaii. 
Um, and while we were here, you might as well understand the mamais that actually our whānau has gone through with the lands over here. All this lands over in Hawaii in the, in the uh, late 60s, um, the government had this kind of uh, strategy to grab all surplus Modi land, especially coastal Modi land, to set aside as reserves. So what they basically done was, they said to the Farno, if you don't pay because you're not going to pay it, you haven't been paying all your rates on that land over there, we want to come to an agreement with you, uh, and basically if you don't, we're going to take your land off you through the Rating Act. So my mum was uh, one of the trustees that um, sent it into the negotiations with the government on the return of the Hawaii lands and, and Peter and Liz were very, very instrumental in actually getting all the legal arguments together and it, uh, it went to court but uh, my understanding is the Crown settled and they returned it. Now what they done was, look, we know this is, we'll put a proposal to you. We'll swap these lands here for land in Kamo and Whangarei. So the whānau thought, well that's a good idea, that's a, that's a good deal, because we can establish a, um, a papakainga in, 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 in Whangarei, close to Rafati, where all the whānau can, can settle down. And of course it didn't quite work out that way, um, there was other parcels of land that was uh, given as well down in Auckland. But basically we couldn't build uh, a subdivision on those lands that they exchanged for this beautiful lands over here. Why? Is because there's coal mines underneath and it was, you couldn't build. So the, so the government actually knew that they were pulling a fast one on us and that's how we got the lands back. Um, so we've now got the lands back in Hawaii and we've got um, compensation. The funny thing about it is um, they used the Hawaii land settlement. It was the first settlement that the Crown actually settled with the indigenous people over here, it was right over there. Hawaii land settlement. They also based all their future uh, Waitangi tribunal claims and settlements on the Hawaii settlement, which basically is, um, I've done a bit of research.